Hello viewers, Super GT here. Thank you for joining me as we return to Gran Turismo for the first time in a very long time. In fact, the last time I was on this account, at least the Ram Shadow account, was the middle of May. A fair amount of time ago, pretty much two months ago now. But uh, we return just in time for the most common combination of all time. In fact, I think this combination dates back to the Roman times. Group 3 around Interlagos. Probably, no, it definitely is the combination that's come up the most times. Surely. Must be. But anyway, let's let's jump in. Did um, a quick practice lap here without setting a time. Just stopped it before the line. And uh, we're going to jump in. Now, first time back in a long time. And this is the site we were greeted with as we as we jump in. Nice to see you. Very, very nice. And uh, two seconds later, he says this. Very, very sad times indeed. And uh, my, my return was not so happy. But I did come back with this. But anyway, enough of the jibber-jabber banter in the pre-game lobby. It's time to race. We're starting 15th. Of course, we didn't set a qualifying lap. So all I've done in two months is one practice lap. Is that enough? Well, we're about to find out. Heading into turn one, behind a guy who is apparently old and slow, which sounds like me these days. Well, let's find out. Around turn two, there's a bit of contact there. I'm gonna try and force it, and it's not quite gonna work, so we have to just tuck in behind him. And can we just appreciate this for a second? Let's just stop it there. It's taken me 34 seconds on my return to get a penalty. Yeah, very good stuff. Ignoring the track limit, apparently, even though there was a bit of contact. Game could have probably just let me off. But no, this is Gran Turismo. That's not how it works. Get used to it. Deal with it. So we go past him there. Old and slow. We're going to have to serve this penalty, aren't we? In uh, a lap or so. Well, on the next lap. Uh, someone ahead getting a penalty as well. We're just going to try and get through the pack as quickly as possible. We're going to launch a Hamilton-esque move here on Alex Albon up the inside. Boom. Actually, he fights around the outside. That's pretty good. And there's actually uh, right rear to left front contact. Similar to Albon and Hamilton at Austria. But we got the inside into Sao. All the Brazilians in chat go mad for my pronunciation. Right, um, end of lap one, start lap two, into the center S. And uh, there's a puff of smoke here, and I'm not sure what happened, some sort of magician just disappeared. But they come through here, just realized that guy actually just somehow backed up against the wall. Really strange situation there. Don't know how he found himself in that situation, but he did. We gained another position up into 12th. But here we have to serve our penalty, of course. And we do so there, and just lose the two positions we gained. This full GT though comes in like a comes in like a wrecking ball. Miley Cyrus over here on her griefer account, smacking the crap out of those two guys. Gets no penalty for it though, obviously. That's how it works. You get penalties for things that aren't penalties. And then when you have a stone wall, absolute murder, you just walk away scot free. Good job. Nice. Anyway, end of lap two, and uh, R4M Shadow GT up behind this guy, he's indicating to the right. Um, I don't really understand this Morse code that he's trying to tell me, but we got the inside anyway. And we can say goodbye to him. Up into 11th, we started 15th, so I suppose it's not too bad, we have gained some positions. And I um, haven't made an absolute tit of myself. So onto the back straight after the center S, looking behind, and actually, I don't know what's gone on there with uh, Miley Cyrus, but uh, she's obviously dropped way off the pace through the center S. And looking ahead, more Shadow Realm entries. Spaniard getting uh, absolutely sent by the Italian, and um, that's two positions for free. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for those. As um, we now turn our attention as we set the fastest lap of the race. What is going on? That's not meant to happen. Not my first race back. That is absolutely not part of the script. But we continue up behind Thunderstruck 
I'm not sure how you can get struck by thunder, but there you go. Strange things happen in this world. Down into turn four, boom, land the brakes. He was, if anything, too early on the brakes, and it kind of created an awkward situation on the apex. But we have to settle in behind and look for a different opportunity to try to pass this chap, who is unfortunately the first man in the world, or woman, I don't know, in the world to be struck by thunder. But here we go into the infield. He's in the Peugeot and you know, things have changed around here because all I recall is this track being really good for the Audi R8. Up the inside and it was a strong move, kind of a weird one, but um, I'm taking it because there's no penalty. So obviously that means it's fair. Now looking ahead, I saw these two guys with penalties and I thought, well, if they've both got pen uh, penalties, I might be able to finish sixth. But here's the penalty zone, and obviously their penalties weren't very big. Uh, so we finished in 8th position. But you know what, not too bad. Up 7 places from 15th. Not bad for our first race back. And there it is. Finishing 8th, up 7. But we're going to go again. Can't, we can't let it finish like that. Um, so I went out for some qualifying. To try to set you know, a better lap than absolutely no, than no lap. 31.3. Okay, let's see if that's good enough. And on this grid, you'll be no doubt surprised to see that I have qualified in sixth place. Some things just never change. So even if I do go away and have a break for two months, the sixth place curse still remains. And there's nothing I can do to get rid of it. I need some sort of Harry Potter level wizardry to remove that curse. But, um,. Harry Potter isn't real. Sorry, kids. Okay, this looks like an interesting and tasty race. Look at this. Six of us very close. Still in the Atenza here. We have a couple of different cars. The Lamborghini Huracan, first and third there. Up in second, we have the Peugeot. In fifth, we have the Peugeot. And in fourth, we have the Volkswagen GTI weird concept thing. Very strange looking automobile. Now, coming down the main straight, you can see here, actually, pretty much all the cars ahead, very good in a straight line, so it's difficult for me to get the move done. We're going to skip a, a, a lap there, and um, lap two, basically nothing happened, everyone just followed, and we rejoin here in, in, in lap three through the centre S, just waiting for that opportunity. You see the leader's begun to, to pull away, and it's really now a strong fight for second place as we head down to the breaking point turn four hitting the apex nicely Lamborghini up into second that's a Lambo one two the boys back in the factory very proud of the driver's work today up the hill and this is where it all kicks off the Spanish Civil War reenacted through Interlagos and the Briton is going to ignore track limits but somehow jump up three positions I'll quite happily take that half a second penalty even though it was kind of a weird one as um, there's a bit of contact on the way through but we're going to make the most of it sixth to third three in one go all the Spaniards have been absolutely dispatched there but now we're going to try to get into the toe of the Lamborghini here to make sure that we have enough of a gap when that penalty has to be served which is well you know down towards turn four uh, so we're gaining on the main straight, as you should, through the centre S. I've not, and I've not really lost it, if I'm, if I'm honest. I'm not sure I had it in the first place, but I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable here on my return. It doesn't feel too alien to me, despite having two months off. And actually, this is something I've noticed before. Having time away from sim racing, even from other sports I do, like when I play football and I have a break, I sometimes come back just as good as I was, if not better. It's kind of weird how that works, but it does. A little bit later on in this lap, we get challenged quite hard. There's a bit of contact there from the Spaniard, but we're going to retake the position. And this is where a very sad tale. Uh, we've all been here, ladies and gentlemen. Coming through the final corner, you're, in, you're miles in the lead. And then boom, you spun round. The auto spin on the AstroTurf. And before you know it, you're heading into the barrier. You've thrown away a victory, a certain victory and boom, you're in the wall before you know it. 
very, very sad times indeed. But his loss is my gain, so we're going to go past him and go up into second place. And this is representative of a rather jolly good race, if I may say so myself. Well, I may say so, because it's my video, and I can say what I want. That's how it works. Now, coming down the main straight, we're not close enough to have the toe of the Lamborghini out of the lead. But we are close enough to have the attentions of this Peugeot as we come into turn one. Strong defence, you absolutely are not coming through there. And as we come through the apex, that kind of sets off the second civil war of the Spaniards as they battle through the Senares. And that's good news for me, because look at that almighty gaggle behind. Just, um, just triggered them right off there as um, I left them in my wake and they started fighting each other instead. So I just had to bring it home for the remainder of this lap. And uh, let's see if we can do that as we head up the hill. It's just really a case of just nailing the infield, just making sure that the car behind doesn't have a chance into the final corner or the Albon corner or on the main straight because if you don't have the slipstream people can slipstream past you before the finish line and you don't want to give them that chance because that's embarrassing that's uh, very embarrassing to lose a position on the finish line and we don't want to be doing that obviously okay through turn 11 and it looks like we're safe here and uh, not relenting under the pressure of the Spanish Armada behind. In fact, there's four Spaniards in the immediate positions behind me, but we're gonna cross the line here to finish second. And that is not too bad. For our second race back, we have finished in second from sixth place. And uh, yeah, not too bad. But we're gonna go and find the Peugeot. It turns out I didn't actually have it on this account, um, as blasphemous as that is. So we're gonna go over to France, over to Peugeot, and rock the ultimate racing machine. Look at it, right there. There it is, the Peugeot RCZ. And uh, we whipped on the Evian livery because Evian is the best source of bottled water, obviously, hashtag not sponsored. It just is true, it's just a fact. Right, turn one then. Let's see what we can do in the beautiful French machine. As, uh, oh, there we go, he's spun round. Apparently he was on wet tires, which doesn't help. If I must be honest. And we go past uh, the GTI who gets a two-second penalty. Um, not sure what for, but uh, welcome to Gran Turismo, basically. And uh, we have a real shot here of something good. Something really rather glamorous and beautiful. Because we've already jumped from sixth up to third. Now that is not too bad of a return for three corners. Uh, so we have a chance here of winning the race definitely and uh, the, the lead is actually in the Peugeot as well so the Peugeot boys here one and three and uh, the boys back in France back in the Peugeot factory no doubt going to be happy but we have also this big boy Atenza to contend with we're going to whip it forward a lap and you can see the situation hasn't changed too much although I'm a little bit closer to this car as we jump into the final corner or the final corner that actually matters and we've got a semi-decent exit let's see if this is going to pay dividends down the main straight in towards turn one as of course the leader doesn't have any slipstream so something is going to kick off here as we head towards turn number one lap number three fastest lap of the race uh, 31 4 into the corner late on the brakes we still hit the apex though beautifully done and this British guy in the Atenza all over the place. A bit like me in race one. And on the exit, we have a good position here. Look at that. We are well within a car whip here. And this is a potential move. And when I say potential, I mean concrete stone wall move. I mean absolutely bang on. See you later, my mate. And I'm on I'm going on to uh, catch up with the Spaniard now and try to win this race. So we say goodbye to our British friend and try to win the race. As um, we're pretty much exactly halfway into this race. Now I do just want to say uh, thank you for sticking by me in these weird times. I obviously haven't been posting so many videos recently. Um, and of course there's still lots of channel members so I'm really appreciative of you know everyone who stayed on Patreon and uh, all the channel members still. 
you know, I will be, I will get back to posting the normal amount at some point. But um, I just really appreciate that everyone who's stuck by me, and I've been getting loads of messages on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube comments. You know, people they're waiting for the videos. They really can't wait to watch, and it's just always good to know that you know that there's people out there that really look forward to these videos. And thank you so much for watching. That's not the end, but I'm just saying thank you for watching. You know. Uh, so really really appreciate all the support as always and yeah just you know just just grateful for that because uh, these last few months have been a bit of a weird one for me I've been trying to sort some other things out in my life um, but just knowing that there's the support out there is always good but um, are we going to better win this race in fact we're getting very close we set a very good lap there on the previous lap 31-2 not too bad it's quicker than my qualifying lap um, and we are within half a chance here of winning this race. It's going to be difficult. This guy is quick and he's in the same car, but we do have the advantage of the slipstream, which I'm sure you're very aware of. Coming through the second to last corner, way too far back to go for dive bomb of the Millennium. We are on for a fastest lap though. Purple sector. We're going to fast forward it and it wasn't close enough we did get very close though maybe one more lap and i could have had a chance but look at that purple i went purple boys and girls 31-0 faster lap of the race i have not lost it and uh, let's try and see if we can improve our qualifying time here um, so currently a 31-3 hooking up with the apex in fact we kind of missed that a little bit but then powering through the second apex really running the curve very wide and immediately here I am two tenths quicker than a 31.5, so there was definitely potential here to set a new quickest PB down towards turn four. It's really just a case of being brave on the power and the exit, as it's going to dictate your pace. Coming up this hill towards turn number six, the double right-hander, so turn six and seven I think it is, feels like one corner, but it's kind of two-parted, and we are quarter of a second up as we go onto the brakes there. And on the exit of the corner, three tenths up. Uh, so we could go and do a 31 1, 31 2 here if we nail the rest of the lap. I must remember to not keep looking at the split time at the bottom because that's when I keep bottling it. And uh, through the penultimate turn, it's a rather hooked up lap. One corner to go. Quite a difficult corner to get right though, this one. And actually, we kind of nailed it, if I must be honest. And looking at the delta, look at that. It's just one of the greatest sights when you come out of the final corner and you're gaining time and you know that you're going to beat your lap. And we're going to beat it by almost half a second. Uh, so this is going to be a 31-1. There it is. Boom. And that's two times better. Okay, we move on to race number three. And we are a long way further forward than we were earlier. And this is, again, an, another really good chance to try to win this race. Uh, this is actually race number four. What am I talking about? I can't count. I missed that lesson at school. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, so starting third, you know, that's obviously going to help me massively in trying to win the race. When you start in sixth, it's always going to be difficult. You're, you're relying on a lot of luck in a five lap race, which only lasts about seven minutes or eight minutes. It's going to be difficult, but um, starting a bit further forward is always going to help you out. I was saying earlier that things have changed around here because I was thinking the Audi R8 was the car to choose, and it historically was the car to, to choose around this circuit in race B, where there's no tyre wear or no fuel to worry about. But it seems these days that the Huracan, alongside the Peugeot and maybe the Atenza, they're the cars although this guy here is doing a good job in the Volkswagen GTI. And so there's a range of cars, which is good, and the top three here, all in different cars. The Huracan, uh, difficult to master. We did, we did manage it in the Fuji race a couple of months ago, and I actually really got to grips with that car, but it just takes a lot, a lot of running, a lot of laps to really get that car to behave itself. It's not an easy car to drive, not, not at all. Uh, really just wants to oversteer basically the whole time but if you can manipulate that oversteer and control it then um, you're on for a winning combination you know 
as um, you can get on the power so much earlier than other people if you can just really control that slide. Um, so out of turn number four down the hill, out of turn three, sorry, out of turn three towards turn number four on the brakes. Looking to go for this move, but just being patient. Uh, that's a, that's going to be the case in a lot of these races. Uh, you know, the first two laps, well, first lap certainly, kind of just waiting for something to happen, just biding your time. You don't need to do it straight away. And sometimes you don't want to do it straight away because otherwise you have to defend for like the whole race, which can be difficult. Sometimes it's better to overtake a little bit later on. It gives you less work to do later. But we are certainly getting close here. Uh, the hurricane drifting nicely through that first corner, uh, through that corner. Uh, maybe in first gear. I was going to say in first gear, but probably not in first gear. I think that would be a recipe for death in that car. But this is where things are going to get a little bit more interesting because we're going to see it on the main straight, and uh, the race really just changes completely. And that's why you always have to just stay as close as you possibly can, get a really good exit onto the main straight. And this, as I said, this is where the race changes. Because if you look at the Lambo, he's not done anything wrong at this point, but then here, just goes beyond the track limit. Like, by one pixel. One pixel is that close. We set a 31-1. It was a quick lap. And um, the leader with a penalty. And that's going to be served just around these corners. And this gives us an opportunity to perhaps move into second, as the VW may well move into first. 0.5, though, doesn't lose you much time. So it's not going to... Be a definite one as we as he serves his penalty we're going to dive up the inside and it is position gained although he gets the cut back on me here you see that on the radar bottom right of the screen and my left hand side there he is i do have the inside though for the upcoming turn six and there it is the overtake is complete he has a chance here, uh, here to get the cut back i'm going to go defensive take the narrower line in and just really uh, solidify my position here in second. And there it is, up into second, so a patient race so far. We've gained one position, it's taken us three laps, or two and a half. And now we need another two and a half laps to go and get one more position and try to win this race. And that would be great, just to be able to win a race on my first day back on Gran Turismo in a very long time. I'd be happy with that. In fact, I'm happy with how it's gone so far. I thought that it would take me a while to really get back onto the onto the pace, but I suppose once you've played this game, once you play any game enough, you know, once you've played it so many times, and I've played this game to death, um, it doesn't take too long for it to come back. You know, once you understand the, the core principles of the game, you need to get on the power early, you need to break at the right time with the right uh, the right brake bias, and um, abuse the track limits. Then, <laughs> once you understand those things, then you just put those into practice when you return, and then it's fine. Uh, so I'm going to whip it forward here through lap 4, it's pretty much just a case of sticking in the toe. We didn't get a chance into turn 1 lap 4, but we may well get a chance here into turn 1 lap 5, the final lap of the race. Look how close we are, of course the leader doesn't have the slipstream. I am the one with the full benefit of that right now. The VW is very good in a straight line, and it does take a while for this Peugeot to overhaul that. And he's going to go defensive, and I'm just going to go and send a Hail Mary up the inside, and actually it's quite a good move. There's contact though, a very weird bit of contact. I didn't expect it, to be honest. I felt as though I was gonna hit the apex, and all of a sudden he comes turning across. But we're up the inside, no penalty, and I'm gonna take that and run with one lap remaining, or less than now. We can keep our call here, and bring home a solid win. From third to first, we were patient, we were consistent, but am I speaking too soon? Well, we can pause it there and we can whip it forward because no, I wasn't speaking too soon. I actually managed to do a thing, guys. I did a thing, I won a race. Are you proud of me, mum? I hope you are. There we go, cross the line to win the race. Get in there, Lewis, intensifies. And uh, rather pleased with that one. Um, I'm not sure what the Spaniard was, but we'll see in this replay. It was kind of a weird incident, to be honest. Um, I felt as though I was going to meet the corner normally. It wasn't like a Lance Stroll on Ricardo at the last F1 race at uh, Styria. So this was the overtake on the Lamborghini and there was a good little battle here side by side and I just had the inside on the uphill corner and then we managed to complete that move 
So that's where that move was done from the Lamborghini's perspective. And then we closed off the door and kept the second. So this is the view from the, from the VW up the main straight over the start finish line. He goes out to the outside, I'm up the inside. From that angle, it doesn't, lo uh, doesn't look too good from my perspective. It doesn't look too good on me. This is from the Lambo. And it looks like a, just a meeting in the middle. It's a weird one. And from here, to be honest, if I was on the outside, I would have, I, th I think, I would, I would like to think I would have tried to leave a car with from the inside. He looked like he just tried to turn and meet the apex, maybe just didn't expect me to be there. But hey ho, no penalty. I'm going to take it and uh, take that victory and run. But um, that is all for me, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And um, thank you and congratulations on make, making it all the way to the end of this video, this 27 minute or 26 minute something video. Um, it's been a weird time for me recently, but I'm getting back into the swing of things slowly. Streaming will start at some point soon, but I don't know exactly. Um, but in the meantime, I thank you for your support and thank you for all the messages you've been sending me, Twitter and Instagram. Go and follow me on there if you want to see some other juicy stuff. But in the meantime, take care, stay alert, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time. Bye.